Lags facilities, well, it's going to be a long story this is because it all starts way back in sort of early 90s. They decided to purchase the land and build the premises that we're in now and obviously a lot of the team back then were involved in the design because we had one opportunity of creating a building that we could all work in, store the vehicles in, have our own dyno, have our own machine shop, offices, canteen, engine building room and so on and so on. So you know the championships that we've won through here through World Superbike titles, World Superbike races, World Supersport races, British Superbike, British Supersport, British Superstar, Isle of Man TT, Northwest. The list goes on and on and you can see, you know, we're surrounded with memorabilia and trophies from races in years gone by. The last Superbike Championship was actually in 2013 with Alex Lowe's and all of the, the previous success that we've had from 2004 onwards really have all come from that model. Previous models have always been a road bike that we have then had to convert to a racetrack and that's always been the ethos behind it. Now obviously over the years the rules and regulations have changed massively and I think it's that time where Honda now have primarily a track based machine. The philosophy has changed massively, you know, the 2020 machine is a totally different motorcycle altogether. Yeah, so obviously we've got the bike, the bike quite, um, the bike, the bike <sighs> quite late or early. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how you look at it. Right. Well, what, what am I trying to say? Um, Where did you get the bike from? <laughs> we got the bike late December. 30th of December 2019 and we've just taken delivery of our new CBR 1000RR RSP. We'd always want it earlier, for sure, but listen, you know, to, to get the bikes now in 2019 is uh, definitely a big step forward for us to start some development with the exhaust and the bodywork. As a standard bike, it's obviously a, a phenomenal bit of kit. Andrew and Glenn rode it in a test at Andalusia in the middle of January. Completely standard. Both of them loved it, so it was kind of evident then that it was, um, it was a a bit of kit and you know it's, it's perfect for the track. The chassis is really really good. The chassis is see like the turning of it, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Really really good, like surprisingly. <laughs> The bike really turns. Yeah. You know, normally you don't feel the speed when you start riding again because your brain's used to it. But the first time you're in, you're in. It's, yeah. it's really, really fast. From that test, we kind of got a few seating position things that we need to sort out, like you know, footrest height and handlebar position, which was good. So we've taken the data from that and started to produce some handlebars and footrests for us to use in racing. Andrew and Glenn are both fairly tall lads and that was one of the areas where especially Glenn commented on that he felt his handlebar position for him was too close and he needed more room between the arms and the elbows and the knees and everything else to get tucked in. Day one was good, you know, like we've both spoke about, there's not too many of these bikes about at the minute and not too many people get to ride them so we're certainly not going over, over the limit but it's very impressive. Luckily we've been working with EvoTech this year and they've been scanning some of the parts for us which has helped us massively in getting bits designed and made without actually having the part to hand. The 3D system that we actually use uses a dot system to pinpoint the location of the actual part. So it uses the dot so that it recognises where it is. Once those dots have been scanned are in place, the actual lasers scan the part based on the dots as a reference, which means that you can stop and start the scan at any point and it knows exactly where it is. The accuracy that we would expect to get down to would be probably around 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a millimetre. It can be better, but the tighter you make the resolution, the more data you gather in hence the slower the process actually is. So there's a balance to be had between speed and uh, accuracy. Also the fuel tank is a big part and it's the thing that we need to do a race of the BSB and to do TT, but to design it from scratch without the tank manufacturers ever seeing a tank. EvoTech could scan the frame, and scan the standard tank, 
the subframe, the shock and the swing arm and from all those scans made a model of the bike so the designers then managed to get the tank in to fit those parts and put the extra leaderages in knowing where it will go without interfering with the swing arm or any other part of the bike without seeing it or actually touching it, he's done it all from CAD. It allows you to be almost production ready with your prototypes. You're virtually cutting out all of the development time that would have been an old phrase to use would be knife and fork in it, to sort of do a little bit, try it on, do another bit, try it on. Well this allows you to go straight to what would probably be a 3D print, which in most instances will be bang on straight away. As soon as you take away the, the road plastics and everything like that, that opens up a lot of space there, so it's, it's relatively easy to, to gain capacity under the seat area. With a lot of our superbike work, uh, through BSB and through World Superbike, often top level riders are looking for a couple of hundred RPM in, in a corner, so there's been time over the last few years where we've then fine tuned ratios to that extent where they're carrying say two or three hundred RPM more or less to suit the throttle and the, the torque and the, how the bike feels through the corner at that point. Coming back from Arbacetti, I mean, we arrived back in England, literally unloaded the truck to find ourselves going into lockdown, uh, which was an unbelievable state and obviously the right thing to do. So during that period, it has been difficult because of working with our partners and suppliers that have been in the same situation. It's something that we've managed to just keep going and it has worked out. We do have everything that we were aiming for, albeit we would have liked to have had this three months ago. But, you know, we've got a good package, a good base to develop and move forward for 2020. In Albacete, uh, we really only had the Mutec and the suspension and brakes, tires from super stock bikes, so it was pretty stock. And now we have the gearbox and a few other little things. So step by step, uh, the bike's improving. And yeah, we don't need to get all the parts at once. We need to understand what the bike's doing and put each part on and see the positive and sometimes the negative that comes with that. So far, there's been more positive, so that's good. And we're starting to understand it a lot more. It's a lot different to ride to the old bike that we had. Also, I have a new crew chief, we're working together good. I enjoy the morale that the whole team that I have around me has, and I like that. I'm quite a happy-go-lucky kind of person, and the people around me have that mentality as well, so I feel like together we can do a good job. This game was good. Um, it was good to work with the team properly for the first time on a, like, a super, super stock bike, as you would call. Uh, Albacete Andrew rode really well, which was like uh, nice to see because you kind of get an idea, right? The bike's capable of doing this. <laughs> it wasn't so strong there, but maybe that was uh, maybe some nerves are going to the new team. I don't know. It was nice uh, working with lads left there in a nice frame of mind and understanding the bike a bit more for what changes to try at our next test, which turned out to be uh, four months later here at Cadwell. The objective here really today is a, a bit of a shakedown. We've got some new components on the bike from a fuel tank, gearbox, fueling, mapping and everything else that we need to evaluate. So we started here with the same bike from Spain, other than rig fuel tank and gearbox. So we tank, uh, the position of that was a little bit nicer. I think Andrew started with a standard one and switched to it as well, and you same feedback. So yeah, obviously we've got the new Superbike tank. We started on the standard tank, so Andrew can get back into the swing of things and get a feel for the bike, how it was in Spain, because we ran standard tanks in Spain. And then that way, if anything crops up with how the bike will feel now with the Superbike tank, because the weight is in a slightly different position, I'll know what's caused that. If I started on the super bike tank uh, and we had issues, then we might be chasing our tail a little bit. Talos Designs has been going for five or six years now. We've got a long experience of designing and manufacturing motorcycle parts. We started out in BSB doing swing arms and fuel tanks. We was in MotoGP, Moto3, Moto2, and basically we've designed and manufactured complete motorcycles that have won MotoGP races.
we got the scan data of the fuel tank, the frame and everything so we know what we're working within. We then use a 3D CAD to produce the 3D pattern, which we then split into different tools that we can use on the press. This is pressed to the first stage, then it's chased in and basically pressed again. And you just keep doing that probably about four or five times till you end up with a finished product. We press each panel and then each panel is trimmed goes together on the jig, is tacked together very skillfully, final welded, tidied up, pressure tested and hopefully painted. For a tank is normally about a week a tank, for sure there's a lot of work and a lot of hand skill. The one thing that we're very proud of in Talos Designs is the skill of the fabricators we have. You know, we've got the new gearbox set up in there, which we knew we were going to move to that. So obviously we started with the new modification to the gearbox. And both riders obviously like the direction we've gone in. Now Nova have been fantastic relationship working with them. I mean, they've got some great products and very, very clever guys as well with their ideas and, and thought process. We've been using Nova gearboxes for a number of years now. Since 1989, Nova's worked with pretty much every major manufacturer at some point. We are active or have been active in World Superbike, World Supersport, Moto3, BSB, yeah, so we've sort of worked everywhere. The OEM gearboxes are designed and built for a purpose and to a price, and within those parameters, they're absolutely fine. But once you get into the realm of racing, you need something more, something a bit extra. The main differences are materials, heat treatments, surface finishes and detail design that we're able to incorporate with processes like CNC machining and that sort of thing that aren't easily adapted to mass production processes. When we pick a set of ratios, basically we're closing the gap between first and six, pushing them all closer together with a lot of our superbike work uh, through BSB and through World Superbike. Often top level riders are looking for a couple of hundred RPM in, in a corner so there's been time over the last few years where we've then fine-tuned ratios to that extent where they're carrying, say, two or three hundred up here, more or less, to suit the throttle and the torque and how the bike feels through the corner at that point. We're able to try different things with a really good sort of test procedure behind it at Honda. They do everything really thoroughly. It's a really good relationship and it's working out really well for us and I believe they're getting a really good benefit as well. It's not going to be quiet for us over the next two weeks. You know, we've got dyno work over the next three days. We're waiting for Kropovich delivery. We've got a new exhaust system to try and run. So there is still more to come, but it is a chicken and egg. We want to get the engine and the character right and everything else for us at BSB, working with the Pirelli tyres. And um, you know, it's a softly, softly approach, bearing in mind that we've got uh, four more weeks to get this done. Practicing a lot of starts today, just because obviously it's a new engine, peak torques in a different area compared to the old bike, so it's just getting Andrew, Glenn, both used to launching the bike in a different area, different RPM. To win two pretty super bike races in one weekend is a big achievement, I think, especially for us coming here with a brand new bike. This is um, another private test for us and it's been another good day. Obviously we're still working on the new bike, still limited track time. So we keep learning things, keep trying new things, seeing what works, what doesn't work. So yesterday, full day on circuit for F3 guys. Not that many cars here, albeit, but a full day for them. And unfortunately, there's rubber down, there's a gap and then there's rubber. So from a motorcycle point of view, it's some grippy areas of the track and then some areas of the track that aren't so grippy. Where the engine has been to around this, so there's a crossover and just like going on to the ice pool. 
spider is on with the chassis. He's flat out, so he's uh, he's cured the first hurdle we had this morning. So let's see if we can keep keep the ball rolling. <laughs> the chassis side is pretty much standard. We've got our triple clamps in there for our forks. We're running with a standard swing arm, standard link, standard subframe, and everything else we're working to develop. So leaving Stetson Test, we've got basically all the parts and mechanical bits and pieces that we were going to have for the next few weeks and concentrating on the electronics, concentrating on top mapping, dyno work to improve the fire blade ready for round one. Obviously the championship dictates we run a MoTeC ECU and dash, same for everyone all across the board. So we get the ECU completely blank I'd say. There's a few things in there which MoTeC do calibrate for us but as far as the fuel and ignition goes we're starting from a, a zero map. Absolutely nothing. Yeah so on the fuel inside of it basically we tell it how much fuel to put in. We have lambda sensors in the exhaust system and we have a, like a lambda aim target so we add or take away fuel to get that, that target. Not only do we tell it how much fuel to put in, we tell it when to put it in. And on most modern bikes these days, they have an upper and lower injector. It's for a throttle control or response and then top end. So it's a balance between the two injectors to get the best throttle control and the best performance you can. Basically, this is our current fuel table. It's divided up with RPM as one axis and throttle position as the other axis and then there's roughly 700 sites then where we tell how much fuel to put in at any given RPM site or throttle position site. Doing the fuel map and the ignition map on the engine dyno at Mugen is key really because we can hold it at each RPM site, each throttle site and we hold it there and then we can set the fuel in to give maximum torque. And if we do that every site, we build a tour map and we can then smooth it out with the throttle to make the delivery as smooth as possible. My head's probably not big enough to work out how fast the piston is going <laughs> at 15,000 RPM, but it's pretty quick. <laughs> and you've got to work out yeah, how many times to fire, when to fire, how early, how late, how much fuel. There's a lot going on. I think coming here to Donington for round one, we kind of knew things were heading in the right direction from the test, but to come here and, and be so strong that we have been in Superbike and Superstock, I think is an incredible testament and statement to the new Fireblade. So we spent the testing that we did, trying the things that we did have, and then at the test at Donington last week, you know, we kind of settled with the setup. You know, we've not got a lot of things to try, so we kind of settled with the setup. And, yeah, worked on the electronics this weekend to try and get it right for the race. To win two British Superbike races in one weekend is a big achievement, I think especially for us coming here with a brand new bike. And to summarise the weekend, absolutely amazingly. Um, it's been mega. Three podiums, 14 points behind in the championship. We can keep motoring on and developing the new fire blade. Like, we're in road bike swinging arm, pretty much stock engines, uh, lots of stock components in the bike. It builds so well for the lifespan of the Fireblade. I'm so excited to see what it's going to be like in 2021 even. You know, it's an incredible bike. But for me, I just thank all the team and thank everybody for what they're doing and all the hard work. And all of our partners and sponsors as well that have stuck by us and now seeing the sort of fruits of their support. And, um, you know, long may that continue.